And we produce this silicon anode using a process called plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition, PECVD. Um, and by using this process, we create this pure silicon anode um, and it creates a porous columnar structure um, whereby the swelling of the silicon gets mitigated within the pores and the silicon gets to very high energy densities, one of the highest in the markets, um, and also sufficient cycle life to use in consumer electronics and later on also for automotive. Last year, I had the opportunity to talk to Ashley Cook, who is the head of battery at Dutch battery company Leiden Jar, and he shared quite a few details about their unique dry silicon anode manufacturing process that could boost the energy density of batteries by around 70% thanks to 10 times thinner anodes, and these batteries should be able to charge much faster as well. In this video, I'm going to share an update on their progress because I was recently able to chat with Tim Anahana, the senior business developer at Leiden Jar, and he shared details about when Plant One should be operational, its capacity, when we should expect their anodes to be in commercially available products like consumer electronics, and in the future EVs, and more. Stick around to learn more about this exciting technology. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. First of all, I asked Tim to give a brief overview of the silicon anode technology that Leiden Jar was developing, and here's what he had to say. So Leiden Jar develops a 100% uh, silicon anode. We've been developing that since 2016. Um, where our production process was discovered at a Dutch, Dutch research uh, institute. Um, and we produce this silicon anode using a process called plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition, PECVD. Um, and by using this process, we create this pure silicon anode and the process grows the, the silicon, the silicon particles uh, one by one on the copper foil. Um, and it creates a porous columnar structure um, whereby the swelling of the silicon gets mitigated within the pores uh, and within the, in between the columns. And using this process, also the silicon sticks very well to the copper foil. Uh, and what we get is, is the copper substrate with a very thin layer of silicon, uh, which can be used as an anode for uh, lithium ion batteries um, and the silicon gets to very high energy densities one of the highest in the markets um, and also sufficient cycle life to use in consumer electronics and later on also for automotive i specifically asked tim about the energy density and charging performance of their anodes and here's what he had to say yeah so um what we get we, we get a, a very thin layer of silicon and silicon can host 10 times the amount of lithium ions than graphite. And therefore we, we are able to get to a very high energy density. Um, but because we also have a very thin layer of silicon, we can also reach high power density or high rate capabilities. So if we convert that to numbers, we are an anode developer. Um, so we can optimize the anodes and we've been able to reach high stack level energy densities. A stack level, nominal stack level energy density of 1,350 watt hours per liter. Now, since we're not a cell development company, a cell, a cell manufacturer, um, we we also reach high cell level uh, energy densities, but, but there are still a lot of optimizations to do. Um, so we've now reached uh, cell level energy densities of over 800 watt hours per liter um, and are developing quickly towards 1,000 watt hours per liter. Um, but by working with external cell manufacturers, we see that there's a lot of uh, potential to further improve that on the casing, on the pouch bags, on the tabs or separator. Um, so that's regarding the, the, the volumetric um, cell level energy density. Uh, but as I said, we make very thin layers, so we see that we can also reach um, a high power density. Um, the, the, the rate capability that our anode can achieve is over 5C continuous discharge or charge rate capability, um, and even uh, rates of up to uh, 11C. Uh, so fast charging is also possible here. However, it's also depending on the uh, electrolyte that we're using. Um, so we're now developing a cell with an electrolyte optimized for uh, high power density with this fast charging. Um, 
and we're also developing a cell with an electrolyte for a high cycle life. Uh, and that gets us to 500 cycles until 80% capacity retention, uh, but limits the rate capability to 2C. Leiden Jar recently announced that they have picked the site for plant one, which is where they're going to start somewhat mass producing their anode foil with their new technology. I asked Tim to specifically talk about this factory and details around that, and here's what he had to say. Exciting times. Uh, in the past year, so so Lions are now exists for for eight years since since 2016, and it started with just making a tiny piece of of copper foil with silicon on it and showing that we can actually do it, and it further developed in a a prototype that had the highest energy density of 1,350 watt hours per liter, um, and then we had to show that we could also produce it produce it uh, more of this material and also integrate it into a cell. We were able to make pouch cells um, with uh, cycle life of, of more than 500 cycles, and we were able to produce it on the roll. Uh, so that's not only that we're, we're making a small piece of this of the silicon anode, but actually are producing it on rolls of tens to hundreds of meters. Um, now that we've been able to do that on, um, on production tools, that we actually upgraded, that were actually originated in the, the semicon and the solar industry, and we, we updated it to, to our use. Um, now it's up to us to, to scale it further, that we don't only produce it into a role, but that we produce it with the lowest production costs, with the highest production speed, and the lowest environmental impact. And for that, we developed new production tools, and we're gonna place it into a factory, so that we can also supply mass markets with our silicon anodes. Uh, and we're gonna do that in our first production facility. So, so far we've been working on a pilot production line. Uh, this is gonna be our first commercial production line. And it's gonna be in uh, in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And Eind Eindhoven is, is the heart of high tech in Europe. It's also where ASML is and where Philips started. Um, there's it, it just buzzes of all the, the innovation in, in the area of Eindhoven. And there we found a place um, to build our, our plant one facility and has a, a nameplate capacity of 70 megawatt hours of, uh, of anode production per year. Um, for us, that's that's a big factory, of course. Um, we're jumping from one megawatt hour to 70 megawatt hour. And we will be able to supply for consumer electronics market uh, for our current customers that we have. Um, we're be able, we will be able to, to show that we will be getting to the cost of ownership levels that we are projecting and to qualify for automotive, which is also important. Uh, and in the meantime, we're also looking further because our customers also demand from us, okay, 70 megawatt hours, that's, that's great, but it's a great first step. Uh, and the second step should also, uh, should also happen um, a few years later to go to gigawatt hour scale. Now, obviously, it'll take a little bit of time for this factory to ramp up to around 70 megawatt hours of anode material per year. But I did specifically ask Tim how long he believed it would take them to ramp up. And here's what he had to say. So we we see it in production modules um, and um, by by placing extra, extra modules, we can ramp it up and we can even ramp it up further than than that 70 megawatt hours. Um, as long as as the whole situation regarding demand and what we can how we can grow um, affords that, uh, we expect that by two years uh, we would at least have that 70 megawatt hours. That's an estimation. It can go a lot quicker. Um, we are working with these customers that require a a steeper ramp up. Um, so whenever the production machines do what they what we expect them to do. And there are no big barriers to further grow. We might go even faster. But that's I think that's a, a reasonable time to scale up such a factory. Now, specifically, I did ask Tim to clarify that they're not going to be producing full batteries, but rather just the anode foils. And here's what he had to say to clarify this. The, the plant one of Leiden Jar will be producing a silicon anode foil. Um, so this 70 megawatt hours is, is indeed a production capacity of silicon anode foil. We do have a battery lab um, in the Netherlands as well, and we produce cells 
uh, we do that to qualify our anode material to really see, OK, how, how does this perform? Can we improve the cycle life, uh, cell level energy densities? Can we develop a product for our customers? Um, and of course, we make uh, battery cells to to sample to these customers and to our partners who are making cells on a, on a larger scale. Cycle life is an extremely important metric when it comes to batteries actually being used in consumer products like electric vehicles or consumer electronics. And specifically, I asked Tim about the cycle life targets they were aiming for to get their products in consumer electronics and in the future EVs. And here's what Tim had to say. Yeah, well, it differs per product category. Um, we feel very comfortable starting in the consumer electronics industry uh, right now and sampling these cells and um, setting up production lines with partners um, to produce this on a large scale. Um, and we see that because the specs that we now have very closely align with the, with the market demand um, regarding energy density and, and cycle life. But within consumer electronics, there are, there are quite some different products. Uh, a first one that requires a very high power density, uh, but not such a high cycle life is, is the drone market. And within the drone segment, there is a large need for, for uh, high energy density batteries to fly further to enable medical transports, to enable package deliveries. Uh, they need a higher energy density batteries. Um, but the cycle life, well, it doesn't need to be very, very high. With 200 cycles for drone batteries, first applications can already be, uh, um, be within reach. Um, and going from 200 to 500 cycles, a lot more applications within the drone industry can be possible. If we're looking more towards smart devices, uh, like laptops or phones uh, or wearables that all starts at 500 cycles but don't require such a high rate capability um, so there you're looking from 500 to 800 or a thousand cycles um, and if we're looking at automotive uh, well some developments at Leininger side still need to be done um, but I think from from thousand cycles that will be a, a good starting point to qualify for automotive however as we see in the battery industry, these these specs might be might be already outdated, and um, all these OEMs request higher cycle life, higher energy densities. The battery industry is evolving so quickly, um, and every year new products come up, come in the market, new innovations come in um, that you just need to continue uh, continuously develop. So, whatever cycle life is important now, uh, the target might be higher in in two years from now. I also asked him when he believed they would see their anodes in commercially available electronic devices, and here's what he had to say. Some uh, markets um, that are really dependent on higher energy density batteries, um, they have a bit of a shorter qualification time. Uh, and that differs from product to product and from company to company. Uh, generally, you see that uh, some more industrial applications, uh, industrial drones, they qualify a bit faster. Uh, then, for example, new uh, laptop product lines or new smartphones. Um, so it ranges from um, beginning of 2026, from the, the first moment that the plant one is up and running um, to maybe a few years later because it needs more qualification time. Um, but we will be we were our, we are already in qualification projects with these consumer electronics uh, uh, companies. Uh, so that by the time that the plant wants to start producing, it can be integrated in these products. Um, but I think, yeah, drone um, drone and wearable products would be the first and um, laptops and smartphones will come soon after. While plant one is designed to produce somewhere around 70 megawatt hours of anode material per year, they do have plans to produce gigawatt hour scale of their anode material in the future. So I specifically asked Tim about their plans when he thought aspirationally they would actually be able to announce their next location and when he thought they would be producing these anodes at gigawatt hour scale. As a follow-up question, I clarified because last time I talked to Ashley Cook, he mentioned that for plant two, they were aiming for a scale of four gigawatt hours per year. And so I specifically asked him if that was still the plan. Here's what Tim had to say in response to these questions. There's a lot of motivation at Line and Jar. 
we want to we want to grow quickly and um, showing our product, our silicon nanodes to the market, um, gathers the attention as well from uh, from the market. Um, so um, if we want with the market, we we can grow quickly, but we also want to do it wisely. And as you say, well, you learn a lot during production and and while integrating your your product into into consumer applications. Um, we we aim to by the end of the decade um, have a big big strive towards that gigawatt hour facility, and whether that will be up and running by 2029 or 2032 or 2033, uh, that's going to be the question. Um, we want to move faster. We are already in uh, preparations for this for this skill. Um, obviously, as you, as you want to grow, you need to be uh, already prepare ahead. Um, when it will be really up and running or when do, do we select a location? Well, that will be dependent, I think, on a lot of factors in the coming years. Yeah, it, it will be gigawatt hour scale. Um, we're now still investigating what the location will be. Would that be one location of four gigawatt hours? Would that need maybe more locations that all add to at least four gigawatt hours or, or even more? Um, but the ambition of that of that level of production didn't change. I also asked him when he believed their batteries would be found in electric vehicles. And here's what he said. I believe with the demand of the automotive sector, um, it, it should be a lot, a lot earlier than that, to, to be honest. Um, but if you're saying, well, four gigawatt hours, that, that's a lot. Well, um, you can either in the battery industry um, uh, be a very, very good in, in research and development and, and bring out these new technologies and then scale it externally. But it's the, it's the goal of Lion Jar to produce it ourselves, the, the anodes. And if you're going to do that, then this skill, that's that's crucial. That, that's what we need. The demand for batteries is there, whether it being um, high energy density batteries, whether it be low cost batteries, environmental friendly. There's the, the growing demand for these for these batteries is present in the market. Um, and then every company aiming to produce their own materials and or their own cells should be aiming for this for this level. And I think everyone actually does that unless you stick to the, the R&D only um, and then you might remain at a pilot scale. Uh, we're going to produce it at larger scale and then we should be growing in coming years. Um, otherwise, you see the other developments in the industry also popping up. Um, so by the end of the decade, we, sh we should be very close to the skill. I also asked him if they were willing to license their technology, their anode manufacturing technology to a larger battery manufacturer to really produce their product at a higher scale. And here's what he had to say. Well, it's important to, to indeed, as you say, um, understand that to make this silicon anode with this material, to make this structure, we develop our own production machines. Um, the PECVD process um, that we took from the semicon and the solar industry, industry, we use it now in the battery industry to make silicon anodes. But to use that effectively, we're changing all the parameters and building our own machines with our partners um, so that we have the line and jar way of producing it. Um, and then and then we scale it and then we build the factory itself. It, it's now our strategy to be an, an anode manufacturer. Uh, but that can be in various forms, and also in this in this battery industry, you need to be smart how you scale. Um, otherwise, somebody else might do it at some point. We haven't really, heavily um, uh, invented all the parts of our process and patented it, um, but there are various ways to to reach to the top and to actually make that big impact of high energy density batteries on the large scale. Can be with partners, can be ourselves, can be in the form of licensing. Um, at the moment, we're looking at our plant one and our plant two that we develop these facilities and that we we produce the anodes. Um, but by that scale, a lot of things can happen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about Leiden Jars silicon anode battery technology, and I look forward to future updates from the company. I do want to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. I appreciate your support. It really does make a big difference and does help make these videos possible. And if you're watching this video and you'd like to support this channel as well through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description to my Patreon page so you can find out more. Well, thank you so much. Until next time.